Greetings, royal family. Thanks for clicking on the video and welcome back to my returning royal family members. How are you doing? If you are new here, welcome. My name is Royal B and we call ourselves the royal family. All right, y'all. The conversation with Akbar V and Tommy Lee. All I want to know is why. So this conversation is a sit down between two people who are beefing. It premieres or um, it's can be viewed on the Zeus network, which is a subscription app. Those of you who've been following the channel for quite some time, you guys know I used to review the real black China when it was on Zeus, right? Um, so I'm back, you know, I renewed my subscription cause there's a couple things coming up that I wanted to see this, not necessarily one of them, but why the heck not, right? Everyone was talking about this. Some people were not interested at all. So I did the hard work for you guys, right? No need to break your neck trying to watch this episode of the conversation. It's about 41 to 42 minutes long. No commercials. I did the hard work for you. You did not miss a thing. If you have seen the conversation between Akbar V and Tommy Lee, Co-sign what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> you didn't miss anything if you didn't see it. So the episode starts out with Tommy Lee in her dressing room. I don't know what frame of mind Tommy Lee is in. She is fidgeting. She is talking all loud. She's kind of slurring her words. She's so angry and aggressive. And the people in her dressing room are just sitting there. You have one guy, I don't remember his name, but he's kind of egging her on. I don't know why. The gentleman that was trying to layer and to uh, cut and curl whatever Tommy's hair, he looked like he had a hard time. Tommy wasn't staying still. The lady that was doing her makeup, God bless her. Tommy was moving, getting up, doing demonstrations. I don't know what she was talking about because I'm not fluent in ratchet, you know? Um, I think she was trying to tell us where the beef started with her and Akbar V from what I gathered Tommy was in the studio or she went to the studio looking for someone she realized that that someone wasn't in the studio but Akbar V was in there with her people so she was in there chilling then all of a sudden Akbar V turns around and tells everybody to get the f out and they start beefing I, I don't I I literally did not rewind and I couldn't make out what her point was. She was all over the place. She's talking about how she doesn't have time for this. Her mom about to get out of prison. And I'm like, prison? When did her mama get locked back up? Remember, Tommy was on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, right? Akbar V was on Love and Hip Hop, you know, a while, years later as well. So both of these women are reality TV stars. So them sitting down on the Zeus Network trying to quote unquote hash out their issues is not far fetched. I really don't understand if they see each other in real life and there's no problem. I don't, this, I'm, I can only assume that this was for a check. That's the only thing that I can assume. Okay. So in the other wing of the mansion that the Zeus network rented for these ladies to have a sit down in Akbar V is there with her entourage. Okay. She's there acting like she's some, you know, queen boss. I, I, both of these women are really irritating. Okay. Both of these women talk too much. Both of them women don't have time. Both of these women don't have time for this yet. They're there in hair and makeup. Now, can we get into the looks? Tommy's hair color was beautiful. Tommy looked great. Akbar V's hair color fits her like a glove. Her makeup looked great as well. Both of these ladies look beautiful. Okay. Um, this is not what they wore to sit down, but while they were getting ready, they just look so beautiful. But for them both to be just so rough and aggressive and questionable parent skill, parenting skills, they have a lot in common and it's crazy, but I am going to have to give credit to one more than the other. I'll get to that in the end. So here is Akbar V. She's chit chatting and she talking about she's from bleed linen. You know how we get down. And the guy in the black is trying his hardest to be the co-signer. I see the co-signer in both parties both have on black, right? Tommy's homeboy had black on, Akbar's homeboy had on black. And this is probably the one that she's gonna, you know, give some of the bag to, cause that's what they all talk, the bag, the bag. I got a mixtape coming out. I don't got time for this. It's trust me, it was just so very repetitive. The dialogue was repetitive, right? So, um, you know, she's getting her hair, she's getting her face done and she's talking. And her, her, her friends seem like they're just there for the free liquor. 
you know, because they their faces were like, yeah, she capping, but whatever. You know, one of them said nothing whatsoever. He just stood there. And it was just kind of awkward. You know, some of her friends were looking at her like she was weird. So while, you know, Akbar is giving her, you know, thug one-on-one speech or what have you, there's a whole bunch of ruckus coming from outside. There's a whole bunch of yelling and carrying on. Who else? Who else is it? Tommy. This is a picture of Tommy trying to leave. She's upset. So this is the balcony that she's on. And she's trying to jump over the balcony and escape, right? And this is the producer trying to tell her, hold on, Tommy. She's cussing him out like a dog. Ooh, that girl mouth is nasty. And I'm telling you, she was putting hands on people and it was getting me, it was it was ticking me off. Because I said, if somebody just slipped and, and you know, hit her with a backhand, you know, I wouldn't be mad. Tommy is really nasty. Like she is, that type of rage does not belong on the street unsupervised. And I'm serious. So she's jumping over the balcony. She's pissed off. She's calling everybody out of their name. Foul mouth, not just nasty. Okay. And she's angry. She's slurring her words. And the fact that some of her friends are used to this behavior that's exhausting. I was, this, first of all, all of this is taking place in the first like 11 to 15 minutes. They ain't even sit down yet. You can see Tommy still in her robe trying to jump over the balcony. <sighs> she gets upset because she feels like one of the, her homeboys was mixing, mixing and mingling with the ops. Let me, <laughs> let me tell y'all something. People be using these words and it's so funny, like beef, ops. Girl, you are in the United States of America. You are rocking Prada and Chanel, girl, getting your hair on me. You ain't got no ops. You ain't got no beef with nobody. Like, knock it off. You're on you're on Zeus Network about to sit down and get a check. Like, cut it out. You, you, you ain't got no beef. Anyway, she got upset because somebody played Jocelyn Hernandez's Live Your Best Life, Do It Like It's My B-Day, and that set her off. I, I don't... I, Tommy's pushing cameramen. She's cussing people... So then her homeboy comes out and says, you know, you tripping, you bucking. She's saying, which one of y'all played Jocelyn Hernandez or something like that. And they giggle and la they laugh. The guy's laughing. Production is terrified. Yo, shout out to production. You guys must be getting, I don't know how you do it. They kept their composure. Tommy was smack. Like, think about it. You're holding a camera filming someone. Someone comes to the front of the lens and smacks the camera. That's hitting you in your face. <laughs> baby those men are keeping their composure they're trying to like you know restrain her she's outside in this quiet area at night causing all this ruckus okay just a hot stinking drunken mess moving along these are the beautiful chairs velvet they look like that the ladies are supposed to be <laughs> sitting in i don't know why i took a picture of this i thought it was absolutely hilarious and here's another angle beautiful velvet chairs shout out to the chairs okay the chairs you held it down and did you did what you were supposed to do all right so now these broads are dressed all right and they're ready to sit down neither one of them sit down okay um Akbar, she's like, nope, I'm staying 10 toes down. She's telling production before she actually uh, stands in front of Tommy or goes out to meet with Tommy. I'm standing 10 toes down. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not sitting down. I want to be on my, I want to be on my feet because I want my feet planted just in case I got to. Why don't, you know, these, these, both of these women, why weren't they sent to Iraq? Y'all like to fight. Send them overseas. Suit them up in some camouflage. Give them, you know what I'm saying? Give them a couple of helmets or whatnot, some chin guards, and send them to war. The way they talking is like you would think. Girl, this is not Vietnam. You are in a mansion somewhere in Beverly Hills with makeup, cute outfit. All. What do you mean? She says she doesn't trust Tommy. And her whole thing is, here's Akbar's whole thing, which I, which I can understand. And I don't even like Akbar, so just hear me out, right? She says that she has seen Tommy in person not too long ago, and they see, they run into each other quite often, and it's no static. It's nothing. No one says anything. Everybody goes about their way. So she says she ain't with all that capping for the cameras, okay? She says she's not about to get out here and make a fool of herself because her kids are going to be watching. Why are your kids watching you on Zeus? <laughs> Who's paying that $4.99 for little Jerome and them? 
I digress. Her kids, she can raise them or not raise them however she wants to, right? So she has every intention on making peace with Tommy. This is what Akbar V says, and this is this is basically the energy that she's on. Tommy, on the other hand, I don't know. I don't know what energy she's on. You know, um, yeah, I don't know what energy she's on. She doesn't even seem like she even knows what's going on. She's just angry, right? So they come out, they talk. And Akbar basically apologizes. She says, you know, I could tell you drunk, you know, you causing all this commotion. Like I'm not even on it. So <sighs> Tommy gets mad at Akbar pointing out the truth. She says, you see me, you see me acting crazy. Tommy, they heard you. You were screaming at the top of your lungs in the street. Y'all in the same mansion. You, you... She asked her, where's her room? She said, my room is over there. Akbar said, my room was on the other side. Like, we all heard you on the balcony. Like, I looked out the balcony and I saw you in the street. Tommy gets upset about that. Akbar says, there anything that I did to you, whatever it is that I did to you, I apologize. Like, I ain't on that type of time. I got an album coming out. I'm trying to get to the bag. I'm trying to get to the money. <sighs> Tommy is not listening to anything. Tommy is getting aggressive. She's starting to get loud. So security, you know, she steps in the middle like she's going to step up to Akbar. So security basically grabs her. And then that's when Tommy starts with the whole get the F off me. She's hitting cameramen again. I, I Yelling and screaming. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And then Akbar V is like, see, I told you she drunk. Like cut the check. We out. Akbar goes back to her room thinking she's, you know, about to leave. The producers convinced them to come together one more time. So this time, Tommy decides to have a seat and sit down. Look how pretty she is, right? You got your Prada on, girl. You got on your Chanel jewelry. Your hair is laid. And you acting like a rabid animal. And I'm not over-exaggerating. She was literally acting like a rabid animal. Whatever it is that you on, Tommy, you don't need to be on that no more. And I know it's not just Hennessy. It can't be. Akbar decides to sit down too. Akbar says, I'm done talking. You know, I'm going to give you the floor. Tommy says, the floor is mine. What does that even mean? <laughs> what, what does that even mean, Tommy? Girl. So Tommy starts to get buck again. They both get up. And then all ish breaks loose. You know, she starts stepping to her. You see, you see Akbar's in position. She ready. She ready for war. They pull Tommy off again. This is when Tommy gets even worse than she's been this entire episode. So they separate her and Akbar says she really feels bad for Tommy. She said, all jokes aside, she said, I hope whatever it is that is bothering her, she gets help. She says she's hurting. She's hurting, not understand her pain. And when I tell you Tommy is going off, I want to see the unseen, the, the, uh, the unseen footage. Like I want to see what was she really in there doing? They showed the aftermath. Tommy destroyed the people, them property. She tore off the blinds. It looks like messed up the carpet in the room that she was in. Now, mind you, the owner of Zeus, you know what you signed up for, sir. This is what you wanted. You wanted to show, right? So did they even get to sit down and talk about what their issue was? No, not at all. This was the Tommy show. And I don't understand, Tommy, if no one wants to work with you after this, I wouldn't be surprised. Tommy starts talking. She throws something in Akbar V's direction and Akbar V tried to run up on her. But again, they got a whole bunch of security. So then it's on oh God. You're going to have to see me now on oh God. Uh, leave God out of this. Leave God out of this foolishness. God ain't got nothing to do with this. And I will say this. Akbar V kept her composure. Now, some may say the reason why she kept her composure is because she didn't want Tommy's hands and feet all on her because Akbar V is not about that action. This is what the streets are saying, not me. But I, I can say that Akbar looked great and she conducted herself in a manner where she wasn't trying to get her eyes clawed out, okay? Tommy, on the other hand, mm-mm. Immediate supervision. She needs supervision and a rabies shot. The way that she was acting is so unbecoming. So unbecoming. You can only blame but so much on production. Tommy, you have been acting like this since you were on Love and Hip Hop. It is absolutely positively unbecoming. There's nothing cute about it. I don't, I don't, I don't find it cute at all. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you did not see this, you didn't miss anything. It was more 
fighting and restraining and drama, then there was, there was no conversation. They didn't, they didn't converse about a damn thing. Can somebody let me know why they're beefing? Because if what Akbar is saying is true, that they see each other in the streets of Atlanta and it's no smoke, what type of time Tommy on? Does she think that acting this way, is she's going to get a bonus? Like some extra on her check? I don't know. But she destroyed them people property and no, that's definitely, definitely not cool. Now, I am interested in seeing the next conversation that is going to be coming up which is going to be with Rolling Ray and Bobby of the Lights, okay? Um, Rolling Ray is a social media personality. He does have a, <laughs> he's in a wheelchair, okay? Um, and he doesn't care, you know? He will throw shade, he will take shade. Bobby Lights, he's on Love & Hip Hop uh, Miami, so, and he's also a social media personality as well. I didn't know that they had beef. I'm looking forward to that because that is going to be absolutely hilarious. I do think it's kind of fake, but as long as no one is fighting each other or, you know, y'all gonna throw fun shade, then why the heck not? So I'll be tuning into that and then reporting and giving my thoughts on that conversation. Wow, it's been a long time. The last conversation I reviewed was Princess Love and Ray J, who happened to be the producers, the executive producers of the conversation itself um i missed the others because i didn't care but that ray j and princess love was very interesting a lot of people thought they tore me up in the comments they thought that i sided with ray j i think both both princess and ray j know exactly what they're doing and um to some degree they're a gimmick so it is what it is they like the attention so you know i gave my thoughts on that this on the other hand eh, i mean i guess you ladies got a check for this i guess you know the price of fame is high they say right so if you saw this drop down in the comments share your thoughts and let me know what you thought um if you didn't see it again you didn't miss out on anything you're welcome i did do the hard work for you like the video if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already or if you just want to watch another video you can click on the video right there on your screen on the left. All right, I'm signing off. Can't wait to read your comments. I love you for watching. And as always, until next time, peace.